Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Emmer. I'm a cloud architect with over 10 years of experience certified in both AWS and Azure. And on this channel, we keep things real, especially when it comes to surviving the cloud exam gauntlet. Today, I wanna to tell you how I passed what's often called one of the hardest tech certifications out there, the AWS Solutions Architect Professional Exam. I'll walk you through why I took the exam, what made it so difficult, my study plan, the good, the bad, and the burnout, my actual test day experience, and you don't wanna miss that, and the honest truth about whether it's worth the pain. I'll also be sharing a few tips I picked up along the way that could make a real difference in helping you pass. So stick around, grab a drink, sit back, and let's chat like two friends geeking out about AWS, because honestly, that's exactly what this is. Let's start with the obvious question. Why would anyone willingly do this to themselves? For me, it came down to three things. One, professional growth. I already had the associate cert and real world cloud experience, but the pro cert shows you ready for the big leagues. It's like AWS saying, okay, you can architect multi-region enterprise scale systems with your eyes closed. Number two, career leverage. I won't lie, this cert is a resume booster. When recruiters see it, they know you're serious. It definitely helps you stand out for cloud architect and leadership roles. And number three, personal challenge. I wanted to see if I could actually pull it off. For me, this felt like climbing a mountain, something big, intimidating, and totally worth the effort. You have to carve out time, stay disciplined, and push through the hard days. I knew it was going to suck at times, but I also knew that standing at the top hitting submit and passing, would feel absolutely incredible. Let's talk about what makes this exam a beast. 75 long, complex questions. These aren't multiple choice fluff. They're full-blown business cases, and they try to trick you every step of the way. 180 minutes of deep concentration. It's a mental marathon. If you lose focus midway, your toast. I lost my focus at the beginning of the exam and made it tougher for myself the rest of the way. Scenarios feel real. It's not about trivia, it's about making architectural decisions, just like in your job, except every option sounds right and you have time limit on every decision you make. You'll be forced to choose between high availability, cost efficiency, operational complexity, security, and performance, sometimes all in one question. This exam isn't about knowing what S3 or EC2 is, it's about knowing when, why, and how to use the right tool in the right context under pressure. So yeah, it's tough, but it's also incredibly rewarding and absolutely doable. I gave myself just four weeks to prepare, and yeah, it was intense, but it worked. Here's how I broke it down. In the first two weeks, I focused on reviewing everything that might come up on the exam. Now listen, this exam isn't one of those where you memorize a few facts and expect them to show up. It's not a trivia game. AWS wants to know if you understand real architectural decisions, best practices, and trade-offs. I used Stefan Marek's Udemy course and let me tell you, it's solid. It's got 19 sections, but honestly, about 15 of those are crucial. I plan to study one to two sections per day, usually early in the morning before work. I dedicate around one to three hours each morning. Then, if I felt like I needed it, I'd spend another hour at night reviewing what I learned. This schedule helped me cover everything in one big, focused swoop without feeling completely overwhelmed. I wasn't cramming, I was building understanding, and that's key for this exam. Week three was all about practice exams. This is where things really started to click. 
I used Neil Davis's practice exams in Udemy. There are six sample exams, each with 35 questions. That might not sound like a lot, but trust me, these are not easy. I did one full exam per day and I took my time. After finishing the exam, I would go through every single question, whether I got it right or wrong. And here's the thing, Neil's questions, they're actually harder and trickier than the real exam, in my opinion. But that's a good thing, because if you can get comfortable with those tough questions, the real exam won't feel as intimidating. I didn't just read the answers, I dove deep into the explanations. If a question referenced a service I wasn't fully confident about, I paused and researched it then and there. This is where I started feeling like, okay, I might actually be ready for this. Final week. No new content, just targeted review and exam simulation. I went back to Stefan Marek's course and revisited the full PDF with all the slides. That file became my Bible. I reviewed every topic again, but I focused on my weak spots only. Stuff like hybrid networking, backup strategies, or anything I was shaky on. I also redid four of Neil Davis's exams, two of them back to back, timed at 100 minutes to simulate the real exam experience. That was brutal, but so worth it. It trained me to focus under pressure and manage my time. Then, the last two days, I did almost nothing. Seriously, two days before the exam, I skimmed a few notes in the morning and then closed my laptop. The day before the exam, I didn't look at anything. I went about my day, watched a movie at night, and got to bed early. And let me tell you, this is crucial. You're not going to learn anything new the day before the test. All you can do is stress yourself out, and that won't help. Just relax, let your brain breathe, go into the exam calm and ready. I chose to take the exam from home. I've done an in-person exam at a testing center before, and honestly, I didn't love it. Too much distraction. At home, I was way more comfortable and my internet is rock solid, so I wasn't worried about connectivity issues. But fair warning, if your internet is spotty or unreliable, go to a testing center. It's not worth the risk or getting disconnected in the middle of a 180 minute exam or like 10 minutes before your exam is over, you get disconnected. Just, it's not worth it. Now, when you're taking the AWS exam at home, there's a strict process. Once you complete your check-in, talk to the proctor, and they launch your exam, you cannot leave your seat for any reason until you're done. Not for water, not for the bathroom, and definitely not for the forgotten coffee. And yes, I learned that the hard way. I forgot to bring my coffee cup from the kitchen before starting the exam. I figured I'd grab it after the setup, but nope. Once the exam launched, I was locked in. That threw me off big time. I couldn't stop thinking about the coffee that was just a few feet away and it completely messed up my focus for the first 10 to, 10, 10 to 15 questions. Eventually, I settled down. But then I realized I was falling behind. I looked at the clock and thought, if I keep going this slow, I won't finish. So I took a breath, locked in and pushed hard through the next 20 to 25 questions, speeding up my pace just enough without rushing. That helped me catch up and I was able to take my time with the final 20 or so questions. I felt more relaxed and confident again. Don't make the same mistake I did. Before you start the exam, make sure you go to the bathroom, grab your water, bring your coffee, Take care of anything else that might interrupt you. Whatever that is, if you have a dog at home, let the dog outside. If you have anybody at home, just let, tell them to leave you alone while you're taking the exam. Because once the exam starts, you're in your seat until the end, 
or you forfeit. It's that simple. You just get that in your head. You cannot leave your seat once the exam starts for no reason. Now, during the exam, I flagged 18 questions for review. That's pretty normal, I think. Some questions were just tricky and I wanted to come back to them with a fresh perspective. After answering everything, I looked back reviewing those flagged questions, made a few changes and then finally hit submit. Oh, and one thing that caught me off guard, you don't get your results immediately. When you finish, there is no you passed screen. It can take up to five, five business days. Though for me, I actually got the results later that same day via email. Thankfully, it was a congratulations email and it felt good. Now, let's talk about exam strategy tips. Let me leave you with a few strategies I used during the test itself. Some questions are straightforward. You'll read them and instantly recognize what to do. But don't rush it. The answers might look similar and it's easy to pick the wrong one if you're too quick. Always read all the options carefully. Even when you think you know the right one, take a second look and double check. Look for subtle differences. If a question covers a topic you're not familiar with, don't panic. Use the process of elimination. You can usually knock out two to three options right away, leaving you with one or two that make more sense. If you're down to two options, don't guess right away. Reread the question and both choices carefully. AWS loves to include small details or qualifiers that guide you toward the correct answer. For example, if question asks for the most cost-effective disaster recovery strategy, that's your clue. While spinning up a full environment in another region is a valid DR solution, it's definitely not cost effective. In that case, something like a backup or restore or pilot light might be the better fit. Here are some tips to help you pass. Here's what I'd tell anyone preparing for the AWS Solutions Architect professional exam. Don't memorize, understand. This exam isn't about repeating what you read in the docs. AWS wants to see if you understand why you choose one solution over another. You'll often be presented with multiple technically valid answers, but only one truly fits the specific scenario in the question. Think like a real architect. Practice under real exam conditions. I can't stress this enough. Do full length timed exams, at least two of them. It helps you build focus and stamina. The actual test is long. And if you're not used to sitting and thinking critically for three hours straight, it can wear you down. Track your weak areas and double down on them. Everyone has weak spots. Maybe it's networking, pricing, or DR strategies. Find yours early and focus your efforts there. Don't waste too much time on topics you're already confident in. You're not trying to be perfect everywhere. You're trying to pass. Don't skip the white papers, especially the AWS Well Architected Framework and Disaster Recovery Strategies white paper. These are core to how AWS thinks about designing resilient, cost-effective systems. And they show up in the exam again and again. Give yourself grace. Some days, you'll feel like you're crushing it. Other days, you'll feel lost and think there is no way you'll be ready in time. That's totally normal. If you miss a day or two studying, don't beat yourself up. Just pick it back up the next day. Progress is more important than perfection. So let me answer the big question you might be asking yourself. Is the AWS Solutions Architect Professional Certification worth it? Yes, for your career. It opens doors and shows that you've got what it takes to operate at a senior level. Yes, for your confidence. Once you pass, you'll know you can architect solutions for complex real-world problems. Yes, if you want to grow. This exam will push you. It forces you to get outside your comfort zone and really think like an architect. 
It's not an easy win, but it's one of the most rewarding achievements I've earned in my career. So if you're on the fence, just start. You'll be amazed by what you're capable of. If you found this helpful, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Subscribe if you want more honest tech advice, career tips, and cloud content that doesn't put you to sleep. And drop a comment. Are you taking the AWS SA Pro? Already passed it? Freaking out about it? I'd love to hear from you. And hey, if you want a deep dive video with my full study schedule, exam notes, and flashcard tips, just say the word. See you in the next one.